Okay, as I'm progressing here, I'm having some real challenges. This is that stuff right there that is due to fire damage. And the stain just got into those dark, the dark stain got into the dark spots. And I'm just, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to try some stuff. More later. So, in the end, I spent a lot of time um, and tried some different things, but I applied, used a cotton swab to apply some heavy uh, amounts of dark dye on some of these spots that were the most, um, that were not accepting the dye. I did a lot of, a lot more work on trying to um, even out the burst, and I think that turned out pretty well. And I had one more situation. I was up here. The um, there was a lot of that uh, fire damage that was that was really making it look pretty ugly, and I needed to get it darkened. But I had a little problem, which was that the uh, um, the up around and underneath the the neck, the lip of the neck that sticks out over here, um, I hadn't been able to get it sanded down really beneath the old varnish. <laughs> For some reason, it accepted the yellow, the light yellow dye, really well, and would not was was really giving me trouble with accepting the dark dye. Um, and what I did was I created that little um, space there, and I called Kevin and and had him. Look at it on it, at it on a video chat, and see what he thought. And he thought it looked just fine, um, and so we're sticking with that. Hopefully, when it all dries out, it'll resist the um, the true oil finish that I'm going to put on it. Because that would be a bummer if the true oil just took all of that dye and made it start um, spreading out again. But uh, we're going to see how it goes from here. I also took the time while I was at it to start to lay it, putting some dark dye on the uh, headstock. That turned out pretty well. Well, one thing I came up with to deal with some of those light spots was my old trick of creating a false veneer using a razor blade and cutting in to the wood that way. Um, some of the dark stain could sink down into those cracks of false veneer and create more darkness there. Just thought I'd show a little bit of what I'm doing on the sides here. I'm using my brown and I'm working up to part way through the curb on each side and then I'll do the same thing the back so we'll just have a little little bit of light area here and then also down here on that curb well here's a really frustrating situation which is the last couple of days I had uh, I decided to go on and blend into the dark stuff that I was using to hide um, a lot of flaws in the wood and it was looking really really great but then they kept on having these little dead zones where there was just this yellow flat greenish um, stain that came somehow from blending the brown and the, and the yellow and um, trying to deal with that I rubbed out a lot of it today trying to blend some more of the brown with yellow but I was using yellow stain as my basic approach and not um, brown but anyway it's gotten much worse and so I'm going to do the only thing I can do which is start from the brown and um, you blend that over everything and see if that brings it back to that gold color that I was enjoying so much. It took me several
attempts to fix the problems I was having with the stain on the top of the guitar, but I finally got it pretty much right. There's only one thing I'm unhappy with, which is that spot up there. I can't seem to do anything about, unless I take sandpaper to it and actually try to grade it down farther to make it take stain. I just don't know if I want to mess with that at this point because it took me so long to get the rest of it to work but it's looking really good now and I got the sides pretty much done I foolishly removed some of the bind the tape on the binding forgetting that I'm going to need need it taped for um, when I put the finishing on, finish on this is a thing that turned out really cool and when I showed it to Kevin the other night, he immediately noticed that. He said, that is so cool. I love it that you made that plug on the um, end of the, jo the joint there. It's a different color. He said, I had planned that from the beginning. Because I thought it was so cool that it had a wood plug there. All right, this is where we are at. If I don't decide to do anything else with that spot up under the neck, it's pretty much ready to refinish, but I'm gonna let it dry for several days before I try to do that. Okay, so the plain fact is I just was not satisfied with the way that looked the end of the neck and I'm going and trying to very carefully sand down that area which wasn't taking stain probably due to the presence of a varnish from before that I hadn't been able to sand through not really sure um, and there was some serious uh, damage to the veneer fire damage to the veneer right here it was definitely showing up and probably will still show up but I'm going to try to put it down to where it'll accept dark stain and we'll see what happens. There's the first application with a cotton swab. We'll see how it's gonna look. It's still creating a real obviously different area there. But I'm going to go ahead and dye the fretboard. I'm a little hesitant about this because and Kevin and I talked about it. And he was talking about how all of that fretware on there is part of the guitar story. Not, not just on the, the frets themselves, which are quite worn. But the uh, but the fret board, which tells that that story that all guitars tell if they have somebody who's really played them a lot and loved them a lot. And in this case, not Kevin. This is the story of somebody before him, a long time ago, that owned this guitar and played it a lot, and not just in even in one part of the fretboard, but although especially up here in the upper part. Well, I'm totally sure. How I wanted to approach it, but I think I'm going to go ahead and use the um, the brown stain that we already have because I can thin it easily with water. First thing I want to do as best I could is tape off the the little white um, fret markers. Very difficult to do because it's hard to tape tiny round things. Um, but anyway, I wanted to do that. I don't want to get brown stain on those have to scrape them off even if it means I can't get the stain up all the way up to them and that's okay so here's where we're at I consider this a mostly a success several um, coats of the medium brown applied with a cotton swab and And I did uh, 
eventually mix in a little bit of yellow to take out some of the red. Here, let me zoom in on this. But for the most part, that looks a lot better than what was there before. Also, I I stained the fretboard and ended up doing several coats, starting out with a really, really thin one, and it just looked better if I laid it on more heavily. And after every coat, I would go back with a dry rag and um, wipe off the frets because I didn't want to lose all that hard work that I'd already done polishing the frets. But they're still looking pretty good. Also, on the edges of the fretboard, I wasn't sure what to do, and what I ultimately did was I took a cotton swab and yellow, the, my very last of my lemon yellow, and just went over it on each side really, really hard. Really rubbed it a lot, trying to get out some of the dark brown that had really gotten on there. And that turned out okay. It turned out even better on the bottom side. Hmm. So, there we are. And I think I'm about to where I can say the staining process is done. And I'm just going to let it sit for a long time and dry a lot before I start trying to apply the finish. Last night I made what I consider a mistake, which was that I I'm listening to somebody on a on another YouTube video and I was getting ready to um, start the true oil finishing process, which I already know how to do, but it's been a while since I did it, and so I was consulting these different videos, and one guy doing a good tire project in using true oil, um, he strongly recommended buffing the surface with some fine steel wool before um, going on with the finishing and how it would make the wood really pop and, and bring out um, some of the color and that was true so, you know and I, I I went against my intuition my intuition says you've done you've got it the way you want it you, um, let it go and just get on with it um but I I was interested I went I wanted to experiment with that and so I did I got out some some really fine steel wool and I buffed the surface of the whole guitar with it you know and it did do what he said, and it did make the wood pop some more in places, but it also um, just, it caused more problems than I think that it's, that it's, I don't think it was worth the effects that I got out of it, um, because it did um, end up revealing stuff I really didn't want to be revealed, and undid things, um, and uh, so in some places it, I think it maybe helped, but if I had to um, do it, I would, again, I would go back, I, I would not do it. Um, there's other reasons as well, but one thing I had to do was, I had to go back this morning, actually last night and this morning, and um, restain stuff, you know, and I, that I'd already painstakingly worked out um, the staining on, and, uh, and one result of that is that the neck looks very different than it did before, although I'm not sure that it that that ended up bad. I think that might have might have been somewhat of an improvement. Um, but um, and the dark area on the back now extends way farther into the yellow. It had this the yellow was coming clear out here almost to the edge before. Um, but it just was a matter of making things look good again. And so I think. I am ready to start the true oil. True oil. I am nervous about that. I'm nervous about how much it, this is another place I had to completely redo, which I'd already done um, multiple times. I had to redo with stain because of how kind of messed up looking it got from the buffing process. But there is stuff that is showing in the green, wood green, um, 
that maybe wouldn't have been if I hadn't done that buffing. It still, it already looked great though, and I would I would leave it alone if I had it to be really easy. Um, I, but I am nervous about starting the true oil um, because I'm I'm worried about how much stain it might lift. I'm hoping it just can just go on and leave everything the way it is, but I don't know that it will. Another and worse aspect of using the steel wool, and something I had kind of forgotten from my last guitar project, is just how big a mess it makes. It's just a ridiculous mess. The little um, metal shavings get everywhere, just a sawdust of, of metal. And they're uh, everywhere and on everything, and it's really, really hard to clean up. You don't want it on the guitar or anywhere around the guitar. Um, it, it's going to end up in the finish. It's going to end up on you know, on and in everything. And, uh, and so I had to spend a good deal of time this morning just vacuuming and cleaning and, and um, getting... All that stuff off. It's still not completely off, and before I put any true oil on any surface, I'm going to tack cloth it because of just how ridiculous the um, mess from the steel wool is. So, um, reminder to self, I do not like using steel wool on guitar projects. <laughs>